Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk about a very pertinent subject, especially if you're just wanting to get into blacksmithing, and that is the forge, but more specifically, what do we use to build the forge? A forge for blacksmithing or bladesmithing in its most simplest components is a source of heat and some way to capture and retain said heat. Now, one of the most common type of heat sources is the Venturi burner, which is simply shooting some fuel, usually propane and sometimes natural gas, down a tube with a flared end and then out the other end where it combusts, creates a lower pressure system inside, essentially sucking air and fuel down the tube in a continuous fashion. Then you have your firebox or the body of the forge and that has to have some kind of insulation that is fireproof, obviously, that will not be affected by very high temperatures and that holds that heat in and allows the heat to build up to a, an appreciable level that allows us to get steel hot enough to forge and forge weld. Now in my career as a bladesmith and blacksmith, I've built three or four forges and purchased three or four forges so far. Now there's not any specific advantage to building versus buying, except for if you have a lot of time and not so much money, building might be a great option. If you have less time and maybe some money to spend on a forge, then maybe buying one's a good option. But what I want to educate you on today is the insulation that you're gonna find or perhaps use when you purchase or build a forge. They're not all the same, they're not all created equal. They all do some things a little bit better than others and I want you to understand what you're working with. Sitting on the board here, I have all but one of the most commonly used forge insulations that you see today. Starting from this side here, we have ceramic fiber felt. This is ceramic fiber wool. This is what's known as a soft or insulating fire brick. This is, I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a ceramic material that's more of a pasteboard type feel or something along those lines. And finally, a non-insulating or just a common fire brick. We're gonna talk about each of these in depth and the last one that I don't actually have present here. Let's start with the last one that I don't actually have present here and that is castable refractory. Now I have used a homemade version of castable refractory years ago for an aluminum melting furnace and it worked great. It was simply sand and clay in a particular mixture. The clay is the bonding agent and then the sand of course withstands the heat and it worked fine for that particular purpose. You can purchase tubs or buckets of castable refractory. It's kind of like cement, but different. It's intended for high temperature purposes. The biggest reason you might use a castable refractory is if you have a rounded or some kind of shape to your forge, like a half round or Quonset hut style, that it works well to put a mold that you cast it around and then remove the mold. And that can work well. You see guys using that. It doesn't have the highest insulative value, although there is different values within the castable refractory options, but you can use that. We're gonna focus on the things that I consider a little more modular and replaceable, although castable refractory can last a long time if properly done. These particular ones are more modular and allow you to kind of put together different forge kits and replace them easily. So let's focus in on these. The first thing I wanna to draw to your attention on all of these particular items is the different temperature ranges. You need to look at the temperature range that they are designed or rated for because you can get a fire brick that looks the same and is rated for different temperatures. Now, generally speaking, you're gonna want something that's rated at least for 22, 2300 degrees Fahrenheit for a forge and sometimes 26 or 27 is better, especially if you're gonna be doing forge welding in your forge. Let's start with the common or fireplace fire brick. Now this particular one, to that point, is not rated for a very high temperature. And in fact, these bricks I have melted in my forge. This particular brick is just a fireplace brick for like your wood stove or something like that. And it works fine for that application. So knowing that, you wouldn't use this to build the forge. Also, it is, doesn't have a very high insulative value. There's different versions of hard or non-insulating fire bricks that are often used for the floor of a forge but they need to be rated at a higher temperature. The reason you would use them is because they are more durable over a long period of time, especially when you're setting stuff on it, but again, only if they're rated for the proper temperature. These are cheap and I use them for sort of setting in front of a forge for the forge door. I've got one as a forge door on my homemade forge and it works fine for that. Next up, let's talk about this ceramic board, this fiber board. It's got sort of a thick felt or fiberboard feel to it and it's relatively light has good insulating value and this actually came out of my majestic forge this the different uh, forge companies will use this 
uh, for the sides or the walls and the top of the forge, but not really the bottom because it doesn't have that durability when you're setting stuff on it. It can get uh, kind of beat up on the sides of the forge. I have a Whisper Daddy here and that this uh, sort of ceramic board stuff and you, you can gouge it. It's not super durable in that regard, but it does have good insulating value and it's relatively light compared to some other products out there. So you'll find this relatively commonly. I like it well enough. I actually prefer to make sure that I rigidize or cover it myself in some kind of um, component or compound to make sure that these little fibers don't start to get into the air as the forge is in use. Let's talk about my favorite so far forge insulation material of all time. And like I said, after having built and purchased almost 10 forges, I guess, over my career so far, my favorite overall is the soft or insulating fire brick. Now again, these come in different temperature ratings and so you have to be you know, paying attention to that. But overall, I prefer this out of any other insulation for a forge for a couple of reasons. First of all, it has adequate or good insulate, insulating value to it. It's not like this uh, hard fire brick, which doesn't really insulate much to speak of. This provides a lot more insulation value, not as much as the kale wool or ceramic wool, or perhaps even as much as this uh, particle board ceramic type stuff. But that's why you have a thicker brick on your forge wall to provide more insulation. And then secondly, one of the biggest reasons I really like it is it's durable. Now this is a brick, it's not a ceramic uh, product, like or ceramic particle or fiber product, it's a brick. It's a soft brick, but it's still a brick. So don't confuse the two there. Now, being a soft brick, you can still gouge it if you're being pretty rough with it. And uh, you know, eventually over time, I suppose it'll wear. And it's probably not the best for the floor of a forge, but you can use it for the floor of a forge. And it works really good for the walls of a forge if you're being anything close to reasonably careful with it. Next up, we have the ceramic blanket or wool. And one of the common brands is called K-Wool, but it's fluffy and I don't want to handle it too much because it's all these tiny ceramic particles that you don't want to breathe. And uh, it's got a great insulating value and you can get it in rolls. It's very easy to put into different shapes and forms in the forge. And so it can be a great option. You'll see a lot of these inexpensive forges that are available online now. They've just got a piece of the, of the ceramic blanket in there as the insulation and it works fine. Maybe not as great as another setup, but it, it still works. But there is something very specific with this type of insulation that you need to know about, and we're gonna cover that right now. As you might imagine, breathing these ceramic particles, either the particle board type stuff or the ceramic wool is very bad for your lungs and you don't want to do that. So if you build a forge using the ceramic wool or even the particle board type ceramic product, you need to rigidize it and cover it with some kind of refractory that will keep it from releasing particles into the air, blowing out your forge with the natural action of the forge, and then you're gonna breathe it in that environment, not good. So what you do is you get yourself some of this rigidizer, which is basically a water soluble or dissolved uh, silicone, or it's not silicone, silicon, like sand type silicon, I believe. And I got this off of Amazon. This is one brand. This is uh, mixes up into a double quantity here and you just use a spray bottle, spray it all over the ceramic product. Now that uh, soaks in and creates a, a fragile but sufficient shell to kind of keep those fibers contained. Now I don't feel like that's enough all by itself. Um, I, I will do that on, on the uh, particle type stuff, just soak it down really, really well. And uh, I think that's sufficient. On the wool, however, it's advisable and I would definitely recommend going one step further and getting a refractory cover. Now, the most common that I've seen is the ITC 100. Comes in a little tub and you mix it with some more water into a slurry and you can paint it on to the, uh, to the wool. It covers all of those fibers up. It also provides a, a stronger sort of a surface to the inside of your forge and reflects that heat back. But those steps are necessary to create a forge that's not going to be a hazard to your health. Now, even after you do that, the ceramic wool still does not have near the durability that say the brick or even the uh, particle board ceramic product has. And so for that reason, I am not really a big fan of the, of the ceramic wool myself. And I 
I did build one forge with it back in the day, and that's probably the last one I'll ever do, simply because it doesn't have the durability that I prefer in a forge that I'm gonna be using every single week, if not multiple times a week. So that leads us to the last product here that we're gonna talk about for insulating your forge. Lastly, we have a ceramic product here that is not dissimilar to the ceramic wool, but it's more of a felt or paper type product. It's only a quarter inch thick and it's got great insulating value. But this is not designed for insulating a forge on all on its own. The reason I have this is because I'm going to be using it in between the fire brick and the outside steel forge body. And that's because for a couple reasons. First of all, like I said earlier, this does not have the best insulative value to it, although it's decent. So that uh, ceramic felt is going to provide that extra insulation. And then secondly, when you're assembling a forge and you've got a steel box to fit all these bricks into, this uh, ceramic felt is gonna compress a little bit and allow you to get a real nice tight assembly and take up any little um, minor differences in the measurements or, or just the size of the brick as, as it may be. So that's gonna really help with that insulation and also just putting everything together with a nice tight fit. This is soft fire brick. I also use soft fire brick on the floor, which again, like I said earlier, probably isn't the best. And I've used this to forge a lot of knives and the, the walls are still just perfectly fine and the floor is okay too, but it just, it just works. It takes a little bit longer to heat up than some, but it's durable and it works well overall. This is another example of the soft or insulating fire brick usage here for you know your commercial heat treating kilns. That's what you're gonna find most of the time. And then I will say something about this when you're building a forge, you do wanna have a steel or you know a body that kind of keeps everything uh, together nice and tight because these bricks do crack over time. You can see a little crack right here perhaps. But it's not really an issue as long as it's contained by the, the forge or the kiln body and it'll it'll work like that for years and years. You're probably asking, where do we get this stuff? So I'm just gonna throw it out here real quick. This is not a sponsorship. These are just the places that I found to buy these products that work best for me. I like to get my soft fire bricks from eBay. There's a couple different companies that sell them on there. It's worked well for me so far. There's more companies that sell the uh, the uh, ceramic wool on there if you want that. eBay as well as Amazon, lots of different small businesses that work through those platforms to provide you with those products. The hard fire bricks, the same deal. The, uh, the uh, felt, the ceramic felt I actually got from Maritime Knife Supply. There's various companies that sell that as well. And sometimes you have to shop around to find the best price and the best deal. And that's what I found with them. And that's, that's where I got that stuff from. I think that about wraps it up. I hope this helped you in your research for your next forge build or purchase. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions about this general subject, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them for you. We'll see you on the next video.